Hello and welcome to another edition of the Stench of Truth. Well, I think one of the most uh, important issues that uh, is on the minds of everyone now, of course, is the continuing escalation <coughs> of the bellicosity of both sides of this supposed uh, conflict that's going on in Ukraine. And uh, what we see is uh, that Ukrainian forces don't seem to want to do very much to um, uh, protect themselves from the supposed incursion of Russian forces, uh, whether acknowledged or unacknowledged, and even against uh, these uh, rogue uh, elements and gangs and, and whatnot. I need not remind you that the initial action of removing the uh, legal president of uh, Ukraine was an illegal act, and that he was removed from office illegally, and that the, therefore, current uh, government in Kiev is illegitimate and illegal, and furthermore is filled with neo-Nazis and Nazi-type right-wing extremist groups. And, of course, who do you find on the side of the right-wing fascist neo-Nazi groups? The United States administration. And the only reason why is because it's another land to plunder for the New World Order, which is already here, which is already in effect, and which is already in complete control of the world. And of course, this is finance capital through oligarchical power structures. Simple. That's all it is. It's corporate and bank dominance of countries around the world. And it's here now, it's in effect, you're not going to stop it, there's nothing to end it, it's not going to just roll over and die, not, nothing that you're doing is going to prevent it from happening because it's already done, it's finished. There are only parts of the world that remain to be raped and raised by these fucking predator vultures and finance capital. And of course Ukraine is a prime target for this. And what we see with the actions of our uh, supposed uh, representatives in the State Department with John Kerry, Mr. Skull and Bones, Mr. I look like a fucking puffed up fucking dead zombie corpse who continuously throws out these warnings and diatribes against Russia. And you have all of the hawks in Congress and the Senate and everywhere else trying to gin up some kind of fucking confrontation with Russia and Vladimir Putin. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't such a serious issue, I would laugh at the utter absurdity of the fucking bullshit that is being thrown about in this entire fucking conflict. But because there are potentially nuclear weapons involved, we have to take a measure of pause to consider. And of course, I think I've made my position pretty clear when I identify the fascist thugs in Kiev and Ukraine as being illegitimate, put into place illegally, that they have no legitimacy and no place to even stand to say that they need to be defended against incursions from Russia because they're an illegitimate fucking regime. They did regime change on themselves, probably with Western, NATO, and United States Incorporated help along the lines, behind the scenes and covertly. Not to mention with money that apparently we can give money to anybody around the world and we can fund any war at any time for any purpose no matter how fucked up and how much filled with fucking bullshit it is to come up with the idea. We can spend any amount of fucking money on it. It doesn't matter what the fucking cost. But God damn it, if you want to give a fucking dollar to somebody as an increase to their fucking social security check, fuck you, buddy. You're a fucking piece of scum shit for wanting something to, to go to benefiting a human being somewhere. God forbid. God forbid. So this is, a, this is an issue that is worthy of pause in, in contemplation. And of course, there's an illegitimate regime in there. And as far as I'm concerned, if Russia went into Ukraine 
and ousted that entire government and put in a fucking puppet state, I would not give one fucking shit. Now, of course, if they roll in there and they mow people down and they blow shit up and kill people, of course, they're just as much death dealers, warmongers, and fucking filth of the earth as anybody else. But they're no different than the made-up bullshit that gets us involved in Iraq and Afghanistan and everywhere else in the world where we want to stick our nose as United States Incorporated. World police, but only for the uber-rich corporations and banks. Everybody else, you can all go fuck yourself. That's the motto here in USA Incorporated. You got money, you got power, you got influence, we'll do your fucking dirty work for you. If you don't, go fuck off. Now, Syria, of course, continues to be a hotbed of interest where there is, from time to time, some more action being done by the war hawks and the fucking foaming at the mouth motherfucking assholes that just can't get enough of killing fucking people. Like John, I'm a shitbag fucking traitor McCain, and all of the other people that rotate around him in their own solar system of fucked upness. So, there are plenty of opportunities for bad things to happen. And plenty of opportunities for war, death, and destruction. And that's all you ever hear about anymore. And I think that people need to realize, and people need to make it a point, to make their their wishes known in that we want peace. We do not want war. We do not want to support fascists. We do not want to support neo-fucking Nazis. We do not want to support illegitimate fucking governments that were put in via illegal fucking action. The people in this country do not want to support any of that fucking bullshit. And we need to make our voices heard because we can. We stop them in Syria, at least for the time being. We can stop this nonsense in Ukraine if we just keep the pressure on that we do not want to be a party to any more fucking war anywhere. Unless someone attacks us. You attack us, then I say unleash the full force and fury of our military against you. But, barring that, I want no wars with anybody. Now, there is this other issue that has been in the news for a long time, with Mr. Cliven Bundy, a Mormon rancher out in um, the Southwest. And of course, this man has been sponging and freeloading off the government uh, by allowing his cattle to graze on uh, land that is owned by the federal government, which he says he does not recognize, even though he says that he cherishes the Constitution which this is the same kind of cognitive dissonance that you find in the idiocy of fucking libertarian assholes and fucked up far-right fucktards, okay? This idea that you can love a thing even though that thing created the federal government and you hate the federal government. Now, the thing that, that is not lost on me is the irony that you have this man, Cliven Bundy, who is, um, who is a millionaire. He's rich. He owns a huge parcel of land out there, but still needs to graze his cattle on federal land. Now remember that this issue is all about that. Now he doesn't recognize the federal government or its authority. I'll bet you any amount of money that he pays his federal taxes. And a lot of people probably don't even know that he's already had his fucking day in court for those who say the rule of law should prevail here. And in fact, in federal fucking court, what is Mr. Clive and Bundy, I don't believe in the federal fucking government, going to federal court to fight anything for? He shouldn't be in a federal fucking court because he doesn't recognize the fucking authority of the goddamn thing. 
See, this is the cognitive dissonance you have to deal with, with these fucking lunatic fucking psychos that want to pick and choose what laws they want to abide by and what they don't. And of course, you could see all for the past month, all these fucking assholes on Fox News coming out and saying, oh, he's just a little guy fighting against the big, bad, mean old government that is, of course, according to them, the source of every fucking evil that ever came down on this motherfucking planet is government, according to these fucking cock-sucking motherfuckers. And speaking of cock-sucking motherfuckers, they're getting a lot of their money from the Cock Brothers. That's right. The I Suck Cock Brothers. That's what they do. That's who they are. They're the Cock Brothers. And if there's any repugnant piece of shit, garbage, fucking put people in slavery, fucking slam people's face into the fucking ground and shove you into the dirt and make sure you don't have a single fucking penny policy anywhere, you can fucking bet that the motherfucking Cock Brothers are going to be involved. So, funnel money to Fox, funnel money into this whole fucking thing with Clive and Bundy. Well, then, of course, it all blew up with the supposed racist comments of Mr. Clive and Bundy. Now, I've seen this from both sides, okay? It doesn't appear that he is trying to make a judgmental or hatred kind of thing against blacks or uh, anybody else in the uh, New York Times piece. I think it was New York Times that uh, interviewed him. Uh, but, but, for those who want to dismiss him as not being racist, you have to consider the... Um, you have to consider the thinking process of the man in saying these things. Now, of course, I think it's completely atrocious that you would say that anybody, ever, under any fucking circumstances, might be better off as a fucking slave unless they're dead or about to be killed. Alright? So right there... Shut your fucking mouth because you're an ignorant motherfucking piece of shit. Okay, that's number one. But consider the thinking process in Mr. Bundy whenever he is talking about the Negro. Okay? He says, I go through North Las Vegas and I see this uh, government housing. Okay, fine. Fair enough. And as I'm driving through there, I see these people with their doors are frequently open and... There are maybe, you know, the older people, the younger people, they're sitting out on their front porch. They have nothing to do. And they appear so sad, which apparently they would be much happier out in a field picking cotton, which, of course, he laments that they never learned how to do. But consider the thinking process of the man who assumes that if there's a black person sitting outside of a government house or a whatever, you know, Section 8 housing, whatever you want to call it, that that person is out of work and on welfare and has nothing to do. Okay, so what does that tell you about the thinking process of this man? Just driving by and seeing people out on their porch, assuming in his mind that these are layabouts who do not have jobs, never mind that they may have just came back from work or maybe just going to work. No, because you're just driving through there, Mr. Clive and shit-faced fucking Bundy. All right? So consider the process that goes into the statements that he's making. He's making assumptions about these people that put them in a very clear category that can easily be called racist, so therefore I peg him as racist, but not a virulent racist, just the kind of racism that you would find back in the day when he was a young man growing up. Still totally, totally not right. So, here's the other thing that I find very interesting about this whole thing, okay? You see, all these people that come to his aid down there don't realize He's, he's spouting his liberty and freedom and constitution and rights and all this kind of shit, while at the same time denying the existence of the federal government. Okay, now don't get me wrong. I got plenty to say about the shit that's wrong with the government of this country or this corporation. 
and that is the fact that it is completely controlled by corporate money and elite interests. Okay, so it does absolutely nothing to govern the country, save to support the interests of all of those people that it works for, and not the rest of us. That's another issue. But to deny its existence is just to be completely obtuse and ridiculous. Okay, but here's the real issue here. What is the actual thing with Clive and Bundy? Okay, he's grazing land on federally owned property. They have said to him repeatedly, over and over and over again, you need to pay fees to do this. Now, he has stopped paying fees since I think it was 1993. He's went to court at least twice, okay? Federal court that doesn't exist or has no authority, according to Mr. Clyde and Bundy, and he lost. How many times does he have to go to court before someone is going to come to try and enforce the action against him? Now, this brings me back to the point. Did the government perhaps overreact? Yes, they perhaps did. And of course, this should be no surprise in the police state that we have here in this fucking shithole country slash corporation that is run by the rich and serves the interests of the powerful, corporations, banks, and the super elite. But what really gets me, what really gets me with this whole thing is that all these people are coming out thinking that they're supporting someone who is fighting for liberty and freedom in the, in the classic broad sense of the term, that I have freedom to move about, that I, that, that I have the freedom to choose my own destiny in life. This, this type of freedom, you understand. But that's not what it is with Mr. Clive and Bundy. The only thing he wants to do is he wants to graze his cattle any fucking place he wants to. And if that means on federal land, then he's going to graze him there, and he ain't paying you no fucking money to do it. Okay? Now, do I think any of this whole system with the BLM and grazing fees and all this other kind of shit is, is, is normal or, or, or should be accepted, you know, if we looked at it and, and looked it over, would it be a proper thing that's being done and all this other kind of stuff? It's all stuff that, that you can debate, you know, at some other time. But let's look at the issue as it relates right now. Here's a guy who is... While there are many other law-abiding ranchers around there, I'm sure, who pay their BLM fees to graze cattle on federally owned land, and I'm sure, if, and, and I don't recall anybody ever talking to any of these other ranchers to see what they think about this fucking freeloader who's grazing his cattle for over 10 years and not paying fees to do so, okay? What do they think about it? What do they think about it? They're probably not too happy about it. So he has all these people coming to his defense because they think that his freedom is the same as the freedom they're thinking in their mind. But it's not the case at all. What Bundy's freedom is, is the freedom for him to do whatever the fuck he wants because he has money, he has some measure of power, and because he's in the limelight now. He wants to be able to graze his cattle and not pay a fucking fee and in, in, in effect take over that land that's not his. That's freedom to Clive and shit-faced Bundy. You understand? That's what liberty is to him. Liberty to him is his ability to basically do whatever he wants because he thinks of himself as a privileged class. And the irony and the thing that makes me laugh the most about this is all of these people coming out there to his defense so that he can be a moocher and a freeloader and, in effect, take land that does not belong to him. Because that's what the liberty of Clive and Bundy is. That's what the freedom of Clive and Bundy is. The freedom of him to do whatever the fuck he wants and follow whatever laws he decides are appropriate for him. Okay? He doesn't give a shit about you. The only thing that matters to him is money and the ability for him to make a case so that he could try to take land that doesn't belong to him. And basically use services for free. And I would imagine there are a lot of people out there that would not be happy with that situation. Say you were his neighbor. Say you had a piece of land that was out in the middle of nowhere that you, you never went to. 
but you owned it. Okay, it's there. Say Mr. Clive and Bundy decides to start grazing cattle on your land, and he says, well, I've been using this for a couple years now. Why don't I put in this water tank here and put in some, some of this and put a road in so I can get in and out with my truck and stuff like that? Okay, fine. So I'm, I'm absent. I come back after, you know, maybe seven, eight years and I decide, oh, I want to do something with this land or whatever. And I come in and here's this guy. He's put in a road. He's put in this water tank and he's grazing his cattle all over my fucking land. So am I supposed to just say, oh, it's okay, Mr. Bundy, you go ahead and use my fucking land. I don't care. Now, I understand. I'm talking about personal property in the form of that something owned by an individual as opposed to something that is owned by the federal government. But Mr. Clive and Bundy wants to have his cake and eat it, too, in every way because the state has also recognized that that land belongs to and is owned by the federal government, which Clive and Bundy does not recognize. But he does say he recognizes the authority of the state in which he resides. And that state has already said that that land is not yours and it belongs to the federal fucking government, the imaginary body that doesn't exist according to this fucking asshole. And the sad reality is you have all these people out there who think they've done a good thing in... in, in promoting liberty and, and freedom and all this other kind of stuff. And all they have done is gone out of their way to support someone who is rich, who is getting over on the system, and someone who's probably a fucking racist to boot. So that's my take on that. And I think that'll be all for tonight. So thank you and good night.